That's a lot of strip. And you want to go to the next level, you're going to have to go from single phase to three phase. It's highly intimidating, but it's not that big a deal. And as Ricky Ricardo used to say, I'm going to explain it to you. Stay tuned. All right, look up at your power line. Let's count them. One, two, I can count. I'm an engineer. But basically, you got two ways to run your electric machines. You got single phase, which 90%, 95% all residents run off single phase. 90% all businesses run off three phase. I have single phase electricity of 220, 240, single phase, and it greatly limited our business. This used to be a farm, and there was never a need for three phase. If you're ever gonna try to expand your business, you'll probably need to move up to commercial sized electric motors, and that applies to whether you're running a sawmill. Man, what the hell is that? Bug or something? All right, the problem is if you're starting your own business, you're probably starting in an area where you've got a lot of residential service. And if you are lucky, maybe you're in an area that had commercial service that has three phase available, but most times you don't because I get this question asked a lot. How do I get three phase service into my shop? Single phase electricity, typically only drives motors no more than 10 horsepower. Seven and a half horsepower is about as far as you're gonna go for any reasonably priced single phase motor. There's a lot of machines out there, and I have them, where a seven and a half isn't gonna do anything. So you gotta move to bigger electric motors like for our planer, our straight line, even our joiners in eight and a half. So I can't run those off single phase. The problem is, as you get into more commercial motors, you get better and more commercial equipment, you're gonna have to supply commercial electricity. So for years, we bounced off having to use single phase equipment and that greatly limited our productivity. For example, see this big edger? 20 horse motor, has to be three phase. I could not operate this. See that piddling little two horsepower dust collector? That is single phase. I can operate that, but it's virtually useless. This is our Powermatic planer. This is a seven and a half horsepower single-sided. This is about as big as you can get horsepower wise in a reasonably priced single phase motor. I have seen these go up to 10 horsepower, but there's a lot of reasons you don't really want to do that. And this was our ceiling. This is our limit. Basically a seven and a half horsepower motor is about as big as you can get in single phase. Now you can get tens but the reality is you're really pushing things and I would not recommend it. So at some point, if you wanna jump to say a seven and a half horsepower to a bigger electric motor, you're gonna to need to get three phase power to your system. A lot of people, to a lot of people it's very intimidating. And to a lot of people it's gonna be extremely expensive. Expensive enough so that when I called up my local utility company, and said, I need three-phase power, what can they do? 
they went, well, heck yeah, we'll get you some three-phase power. We've even got cost sharing for small businesses like yourself. I went, all right, sign me up. And they said, hey, wait a minute there, buddy. We're going to need a check. I said, how big a check? They said, well, with the cost sharing, when we pick up a good bit of the load, it's going to cost you $1.2 million. Me? Right? No, it ain't happening. Basically what that cost entails is the transformers would have to be upgraded. And basically from as far as the nearest three phase was located, which is about a mile away. So I was going to have to pay for new transformers for about a mile. That ain't going to happen. So we were back in the same old, same old, what are we going to do now? And you can see we've got some three phase equipment. So obviously we solved this problem. This is a big three phase jointer. This is an even bigger three phase planer. <clears throat> Straight line rip saw. Yep, 15 horse. Dust collector. Dust collector, way up there. All three phase. You need lots of power. So here's the secret. I didn't pay a dime to the county. What I did was I used a combination of a phase converter and a generator to get all the three phase power I can stand. So now you're gonna go, wow. All right, so what do we do? So let's talk about it here. The two ways to get three phase are a phase converter, takes single phase power from your line, converts it into three phase. That is a useful technique and it starts to run out of gas, literally not out of gas, but around 40 horsepower total. Once you need more than 40 horsepower, you need to look real hard at a generator. The cool thing about a phase converter, and there's different kinds, I use a rotary, there's variable frequency, there's a bunch of different ones you can use. I prefer rotary because they're basically bulletproof. They're about $1,000 per 10 horsepower. So a 30 horsepower phase converter, it's gonna cost about three grand. And that ain't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Remember 1.2 million, 3,000. There's a difference. Phase converters are really good and really convenient. And basically you've got a black box and there's more to it than a black box. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. But basically through a variety of techniques, you put single phase power in and you get three phase power out. Wiring them up is a lot like wiring up an oven or a stove, a couple wires in, three wires out, plus a ground. You can bring that right to your equipment or you can do what I did and go to a distribution box. The cool thing about a phase converter is it does have a little bit of parasitic power on it, but the bottom line is it's not pulling power unless you're pulling power. So a lot of times, first thing in the morning, we'll come in here and flick it on. And that's that aggravating hum you sometimes hear in the background of my videos, because first thing in the morning, we turn the phase converter on, we got three phase power everywhere. In our case, up to a total of around 30 combined horsepower. When we're running the planer, we'll go turn on the generator. And you go, well, why don't you get a bigger phase converter for the generator. So here's the key. The heavier you load them, the higher the losses and the slower the response. I've got a 30 horse phase converter, so I have no trouble running a 15 horsepower straight line rip saw, seven and a half or 10 horsepower dust collector. You add those two up, it's under 30. Our phase converter has been running for, man, I don't know, 10 years. Flawless. If you overpower a phase converter like ours, which is a rotary converter, there's a big bank of capacitors on that and a good phase converter is going to sense that drop in voltage and it's going to start discharging those capacitors to bring your voltage up, kind of like a, kind of like an afterburner. You can only do it so long before the capacitors are discharged and you can only do it for so long before the capacitors burn up. Cool thing is the capacitors cost 10 bucks, so you know, if you burn it up, who cares? But the bottom line is 
Main thing with a phase converter, keep it well under rated capacity. It's going to last forever. And here's how they work. As soon as I throw this switch, the phase converter cranks on. And I now have three phase power. Wow, that was hard, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Three grand, and you can have 30 horsepower of combined three phase to run every machine in your shop simultaneously. That ain't hard. Now I'm going to show you what they look like upstairs. All right, y'all. This is the phase converter. And you may be wondering why I'm wearing a different shirt. The other shirt in the previous part of the clip, it was brown. Now it's red. And that's because I had already done this scene and I trashed all the footage. The footage was horrible. And I deleted it. So I'm starting over again right here. But that'll show you that I really want to make these things not look totally stupid. By the same token, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He says YouTube had gone through and mistakenly uh, deleted a bunch of people who were subscribers. That's concerning to me. So if you don't mind, as a favor to me, go back and make sure that you're still subscribed to my channel. And if you are not, please do so. And if you're not anyway, please do so. Because I don't really make any money off these things. And for me to go back and do a take two the next day, I really like to show you folks what's going on. So hopefully you guys will appreciate it and subscribe. Anyway, this is a phase converter. It's basically a black box. Now this is a rotary phase converter. And I have no affiliation to this company other than the fact that I paid for this and it's been running flawlessly ever since I bought it a decade ago. So basically you got wires coming in and wires going out. This is 220 single phase coming from the power box. Basically, it manufactures the third leg. And oddly enough, that third leg is actually called the manufactured leg. I guess an engineer figured that one out, huh? Hey, let's call it something that people would understand. Let's call it the manufactured leg. <laughs> so this manufactures the third leg. Black wire is three phase coming out. And although you can run this directly to a single machine, you're kind of limiting yourself. It's a lot better to run it through a three-phase, small three-phase panel like this guy. And that way you have independent breakers for all the machines you like to run on the three-phase. Remember, it's a 30 horsepower, so I can run any combination up to 30 horsepower. Is you typically want your starting load to be half of that. So they kind of recommend that if you've got a 30 horsepower phase converter, you don't start anything, because that's where the majority of the current is being pulled on that inrush, the starting inrush, that you don't start anything over 15 horse. But I've been starting a 20 horse edger with mine for a long time. It doesn't seem to care. You don't want it started fully loaded. You want to let the motors kind of freewheel until it gets past that inrush, and then it settles back down. And we got some stuff to do. I got to do a little dirt clearing. And I also got a log to saw. So maybe I've already done the dirt clearing on the editing. I don't know. And we got to get to work. All right, folks, here's our pond. It's looking pretty good. We're having some issues with our dock, as in it's sinking. Other than that, it's in great shape. One of my ditches that was dug 20 years ago is, or is eroding badly. You can see our coal shale under there. We got this black shale. If you touch that with a lighter, it'll start to smoke and smell like oil. I mean, it really is like an oily shale. What I've been doing is restructuring the ditch. I moved it up, shallowed the angle down. 2% grade means it will run, but it won't erode.
righty. It looks a little different now, doesn't it? Man, this looks great. And you know, you guys, y'all watch me do a lot of sawing, but there's a lot more things that go on out here at the farm. People commenting and ask, why not show some of the stuff you do every day along with some of the sawing? Because we saw every day too, but sawing's a job. This is fun, right? So, we got a little ways to go up the hill back to the house. We knocked this one out. All right, let's saw this little guy up. There's that bow. That's a lot of strip. I may have to rethink my sawing pattern here. Dang. Dude, that one's settling down. Ah, uh, this wood's kind of conflicting me. Let me tell you what, this stuff is gorgeous. I mean, look at this, it looks like root beer. But it's not. And look at how close those growth rings are. Gorgeous wood. Lots of hints. Maybe y'all can figure it out. And no, it's not sassafras. I will say, though, that the stuff's as heavy as lead. Man, this, this is some heavy stuff right here. <laughs> I feel like Clark Kent guy got a little too close to the kryptonite or something. This has got some density to it. I need to put it on some of them diet pills or something. Boom. Yeah, that's heavy. Yeehaw! Don't get your finger under that. I'm gonna need to get Chip over here to help with these. I don't know if you can tell. This stuff has like a glow to it almost. I'm not saying it's radioactive or anything. It's got all these different colors in it that are slight hues. I mean, it, it almost looks like a pine, but it's definitely not. But you can see some browns, some blues, a little pink. I don't know if it's gonna pick it up on the camera. And then as soon as the surface dries, like right here, it turns more of a pale color. So, what is it? I know, do you? Leave a note in the comments, let's find out. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.